I'm gonna go ahead and use this spreader. You could, hey geeks, and so the last time I did a PC build was back in 2016. And at the time I built my quote unquote monster Linux PC. It was definitely a beast of machine and it's still pretty fast to this day. And I really gotta thank my brother for picking out all the parts that's giving me such great performance to this day. But now it's six years later and well, it is time for an upgrade because things could definitely be faster. So that's why I'm gonna be upgrading to the Intel Core i7 12700K CPU. And I'm gonna be using a new motherboard. I'll be using the ASUS Tough Gaming Z690 Plus Wi-Fi D4 motherboard. And along with that, I'm also gonna be using a cooler from Cooler Master to keep things nice and cool. So hopefully I'll be able to use all the remaining parts of my machine, specifically my RAM, storage, and my GPU. And as you can probably tell, I'm not the type of person who likes to upgrade all the time. However, when I do upgrade, I do want to get something that's going to last me for many years to come. So let's go ahead and make the upgrade. So let's see what we're working with. Here I have an Inwin 303 ATX case. And on the inside, as you could probably tell, I am not an expert PC builder. It is messy in here, but it's functional. So I'm gonna be replacing the CPU, fan, and motherboard. And I wanna keep everything else, my RAM, GPU, and my storage. And in terms of storage, I have three SSDs and a mechanical drive, plus I am dual booting both Linux Mint and Windows. And my concerns are the RAM because the motherboard supports a DDR4. I don't remember what type of RAM this is. And secondly is the fact that I am dual booting. So hopefully the upgrade goes well and I don't have any major issues. So before you begin, you wanna make sure everything is unplugged and also your power supply, it is off just to make sure there's no electricity and it doesn't damage anything while you're taking this apart and putting on the new motherboard. So let's go ahead and start taking things apart. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, eventually I'm gonna be replacing everything, including the case itself. And so the main work I'm gonna be doing is this portion right here, as I know this could be done better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the GPU first, which I am still gonna be using. This is an AMD RX 470 four gig GPU, so it is an older GPU. And then here, I'm gonna take out the RAM. I'm gonna reuse this RAM, and I'm pretty sure this is DDR4. I wasn't sure before, but I think it is DDR4, so uh, that's a good thing I could reuse this. And then the CPU and motherboard, I'm probably gonna be using this for another build, or maybe whenever I get my new case, I'll use the same old case, and then I'll use the same same components that I have here. So that is what I'm gonna do. And the one thing that is important is I'm definitely gonna be looking over the manual of the new motherboard to make sure I know where everything is at and that I have things installed correctly. Okay, so getting all of this out, the hardest part was actually the power supply I had to press this really hard uh, but everything else it looks like it was disconnected and then my ram thankfully this is ddr4 ram unfortunately they're not the same so this is a 3200 megahertz and this one is 3000 but eventually i will be replacing all of these so uh, at least i don't have to go buy new ram to go with my new board and then one thing i want to mention for these fans because uh, you know it's really confusing at times but some fans will actually tell you the direction of the air. And so in this case, I don't see any arrows, but in general, the air that is being pushed out is normally gonna be in a side where it actually has the wire. So this is the backside. So this portion right here, it sucks in the air and then it pushes it out. And so ideally what you wanna have is you wanna have airflow being sucked in here and then these fans will actually suck it out. But the way I had it set up, it's not actually optimal and I don't have anything coming in here, but eventually I will be getting a new case and I'm gonna have airflow sucking in here and then these other fans are gonna suck it out. And so that's just a little bit of info on this because this can definitely be confusing, especially if you've never built a PC or you're not an expert PC builder and you don't do this very often. And so that's just a little FYI on fans. And another great thing to have is a can of pressurized air. And if you're like myself where you don't really do a lot of deep cleaning, 
This can be a lifesaver. Okay. So there's the board removed and here is the and here is the IO shield but the board has now been successfully removed and we can start getting the new one ready. For serious YouTubers, check out TubeBuddy, the premier tool news at geekoutdoors.com. Get more done today by checking out the affiliate link in the description area below. So before I put this together, let's talk about why I got this CPU and motherboard combo because initially it was because of price. So when I went to Micro Center, I saw this in-store only special in their flyer for this CPU and motherboard for $349 or $350. And that was a great deal because this processor alone is currently from $350 to $400 and the motherboard is $250. So if you were just to put in the price of the CPU and motherboard alone, you're looking at a little bit over $600 with taxes, probably gonna be $650. And then I got a cooler for $60. So if I were to pay full price for this, it's probably gonna be around the $700 or a little bit over $700 but I paid $450 total for this entire package, including tax, so definitely a great value. But then whenever I looked into this processor a little bit more, I found out that the Intel Core i7-12700K is a pretty awesome processor, especially when it comes to gaming, but I myself am not much of a modern gamer. Most of what I do is retro games and emulation, so it's definitely overkill, but another really powerful feature here is it has an integrated GPU or iGPU that it sells at hardware encoding for codecs like H.264 and H.265, which is excellent for my needs because I do a lot of video editing. So when it comes to productivity and gaming, this is definitely a winner. And I even thought about getting the AMD 5800X or 5900 or 5950. And overall, this was definitely a better value and performance than the 5800X and it even beat out the 5900 and 5950X, which are more expensive in some areas. So overall, this is definitely gonna be wonderful for my needs when it comes to productivity and gaming. So let's go ahead and get things unboxed. Starting with the motherboard. Now this one was $250 and whenever it first came out it was $270 to $280. So at least for me, I think that is pretty expensive for a motherboard, but this is more of their entry level line and it seems to have a lot of features probably more than what I'll need, but uh, it came with it. So that is a great thing uh, included in that bundle price I had. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. And when it comes to motherboards, I'm definitely gonna look over the instructions because there's gonna be a lot of things in there. So here we are. So what do we have here? Okay. Oh. That's for the Wi-Fi, okay, Wi-Fi 6, it's nice. And I'm glad that it comes with it, the Wi-Fi so I don't have to buy it separately. Man, this is a beefy motherboard. So there's some other things here. I'm gonna set to the side, take this off, all right. So there are some cables here, looks like SATA cables, which is definitely going to be nice. Um, not sure what these are yet. And yeah, now these go on your uh, case, but I already have these already. And risers, I think that's what they call them. So I'm keeping all those. And I'm going to go through this user guide myself. And then there's other stuff there's stickers cool if you want to use them and for anybody who still has an optical drive uh, these are the drivers but more than likely there's probably already uh, new drivers available but I'm not going to use any of these but I'm glad that they include them so let's go ahead and get the motherboard out of there okay so let's get this outside of the bag this is probably going to be the nicest motherboard I've ever had. So typically, whenever I did PC builds in the past, they're normally within the $100 range. So, wow. That is really, really nice. 
All right, so that took a while. So I'm not gonna be going over everything on this board. If you wanted to see the full specifications, I will leave a link in the description area below. So let's go ahead and start in the rear. There are plenty of inputs and outputs here, and it does have an integrated IO shield, which is nice, so you don't have to put in an IO shield first in your case before putting in your motherboard and then aligning things up. That is a pain, but that's nice that it's already included like this. And then it does have the Wi-Fi 6, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, at least for now, I'm not going to be using these because I'm going to be directly connected through the Ethernet, but it's nice that they provide that. And looking at the board itself, we have the two connectors right here going to your power supply. You definitely need that. And obviously here is our CPU. Up here, we actually have headers for CPU fans up here. And there's also some here for RGB. And down here, we also have another one for CPU fan and also AIO pump if you're going to be using that. Here we have our dim slots, there's four of them. And then uh, over here, we also have a QLED light. So basically if there's problems with your RAM, CPU or so forth, it's gonna light up, which is nice. And then over here we have some USB type C headers here. There's USB three, and then there's also SATA. So there's two SATA here, but there's also two here. So that's nice. There's four different SATA ports. And then over here, we have our M.2 slots. There's actually four of them. So there's one right here, here, and then this one actually has two of them in here once you remove this. So this is gonna be great whenever I wanna add additional faster storage. And here are our PCI expansion slots. This is the fifth gen. And then I think these are like third gen. And then there's another one down here as well. And then uh, down over here, we have the part that I really don't like, but it's necessary. Uh, there are audio headers here, there's comms, there's additional CPU fan headers, there's also additional things for RGB lighting as well. And then there's also um, some additional USB assignable headers. And then over here is where we have all our likes, you know, our reset, power, all of those things are really important. And those are like the main parts of the motherboard. And at least for me, this is the most difficult part for me because I don't build PCs all the time. But if you do this on a regular basis, they're pretty much the same for most motherboards. So that is an overview of the Tough Gaming motherboard. And now let's go ahead and look at some of the other components. And then finally, we're gonna look at the CPU and then put things together. So before I get to the CPU, let's go ahead and open up this cooler because this is pretty large and it's probably the most expensive cooler I've ever bought. So I guess in the future, if I do decide to get more fancy, it's gonna be even more complex. So let's go ahead and open this up. Wow, that is one beefy cooler. Oh man, hopefully this fits in my case. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> and what else is here? We have this right here. Oh, great, so this is very similar to the previous one I had, but boy, this is more complex. There's a lot of stuff here, <laughs> a lot of stuff. Look at this. So this is gonna be going in the rear of my motherboard. There's some other stuff I hear for power and stuff. And I don't know if there's some, there's some thermal paste in here as well. But uh, I actually have my uh, own thermal paste. This is the Gilead GC Extreme. It comes with a spreader as well. So that's what I'm gonna be using for thermal paste. But in this case, this is gonna be more complex than my, my previous one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go over the guide itself because uh, this fan uh, will actually also work for AMD CPUs as well. So my guess is they probably provided ones for Intel and then one for AMD. So I'm gonna go ahead and have to put this on there, but I'm thinking this one is for the Intel. So we'll go ahead and go over the instructions and then I'll come back to this. Okay, so now that I had some time to go through these instructions, things are a lot less overwhelming because once I saw this, I'm thinking like you need all of this just for this cooler, it's kind of crazy. But what I found out was this isn't just for the Intel Core i7 LGA 1700 sockets. It's for multiple different sockets in the Intel range, but also for the AMD as well. 
that's why they have so many different parts. So I'm just going to focus on the ones that are relevant to this one, this Intercore i7 LGA1700 socket. And so for that, this is really the only things that you need. So this is actually going to go on the back of the motherboard. And this is actually an RGB controller. So you can use this if you want, but I already have an RGB header, which I'm going to use on the motherboard. And then these right here are actually going to go on a fan. And there's also some screws here as well. There's two screws to put right here. So that's basically everything we need uh, for this particular CPU, which is a lot better than all of this other stuff. And one thing that I wanted to show you is on instructions, you actually have to remove this fan. And initially I had problems doing this because there were no screws or anything. But what you have to do is you have to apply some pressure and then pull the fan out. And the thing is you can get another fan to put on the other side. And that's what these things are for. So you could actually have two fans on this particular cooler. But what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna get this prepped and ready. We're gonna get this installed. And then we're gonna go ahead and put our CPU in the motherboard and the cooler on top. Now, before we get to the motherboard, let's go ahead and get this cooler and heat sink prepped. So that way, whenever I install everything, it's gonna be a lot easier. So we have these two things right here. And basically it's gonna go like this. And we have one on the other side. And then we're gonna go ahead and screw this here on the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so there we are. It is ready to go. And all we have to do now is go ahead and get our motherboard ready with the CPU installed and the cooler on top. And so the last and most important part is of course our CPU. So let's go ahead and get this open. And man, I'm really excited to finally get an upgrade. And CPU, whole new platform is gonna make the biggest difference. And this one does not come with a fan. So if you get any K variants, then it's not gonna come with its own cooler. So that's why I have my cooler master. There's some stuff from Intel and there it is. There is our CPU. So here it is, the Intel Core i7 12700K. There's the pins right there. All right, let's go ahead and move over to our motherboard. So here we are. So this is where we're gonna set up the CPU. I'm gonna put the back plate in for the cooler and then put the cooler on top. And also I'm gonna have the RAM in here as well. So here are my RAM sticks right here. I have 16 gigs here and 16 gigs here. So 32 gigs of DDR4. Unfortunately, uh, they are not the same type of RAM. So I'll be upgrading that in the future. So the first thing is, let's go ahead and put the CPU on there. So all we have to do is push this down and then move it to the right. And then it pops open like this. And then you'll go ahead and open this up. And as you can see, that's where we're gonna put our CPU. And it's very, very important that you put it in the right way. And here on the CPU itself, there is a little corner here that tells you where to put it. And whenever you're putting it here, you just wanna be really careful. Don't push it in, you know, just be really gentle. It should just drop in. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this in here. So be really careful. Drop it in. Make sure things are lined up and then go ahead and push this down. And that comes off. See there? And we'll pull the lever down. And it's secure. And our CPU is now installed. So let's go ahead and add the cooler and then we'll add some paste on it and we'll be ready to go. So for the cooler, I'm gonna turn it around. And as you can see there, we have these holes right here. And here is our cooler master. And it's gonna go like this. Fits in perfectly. And then when you turn this back around, you notice that there are some basically screws or holes here. And this is where what we set up earlier is gonna work. And now let's go ahead and apply our thermal paste. And one thing that you definitely wanna to remember to do is to 
take the sticker off because that's something that <laughs> I've made a mistake on before. So now let's apply our thermal paste. And there are many ways in which you could do this. You could have a blob in the middle, you could have a line, you could have an X. There's so many ways. And in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, have a blob in the middle, and then I'm gonna go ahead and use this spreader. You could so let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna add some right here. And that looks pretty horrible. Spread that across the CPU. And wow, you know what? Now that I've done this, it was probably better if I just did a X or cross and then spread it out naturally because this thing is kind of thick. <laughs> and now we'll take our cooler and then we'll go ahead and put this on top, make sure things line up. So finally, let's go ahead and add our RAM, but I did have an issue whenever I had the fan on this side, it basically blocked me putting the RAM here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it over to the other side, which is nice that we could do that. And if I did wanna add another fan, I could do that later. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this here. Okay, all the RAM is secure. We have our CPU, we have our CPU cooling fan. And let's go ahead and remove these stickers. Okay, so the moment of truth, um, I have my power plug on, keyboard and mouse, and my display output. I just want to see if things start, but well, there's already some power. I could see some RGB. So let's go ahead and turn this on. Yep, things are starting. That's a good sign. Fans are running. <laughs> Something came up. There's the BIOS. So it's got all this stuff on. It does see my memory, which is great. And all the fans are running. I don't have an AIO pump. I'm just glad this thing came up. There's Windows, there's Linux. There is my uh, Linux boot manager. That is Grub. I'm so happy to see that. So it defaults to Linux Mint. Uh, let's see if it comes up. And then I'm gonna boot into Windows. All right, there is Linux. Oh man, I'm so happy. Okay, there's Linux Mint. So I'm gonna log in. And then I'm gonna log into uh, Windows. I don't intend on doing PC builds regularly. Okay, great. Linux is up. Okay, so this time I have Windows. Press enter. Hopefully it comes up. Uh, so finally, I actually had to uh, restart my entire machine. Okay, so great. So that is my 2016 PC build upgrade. It wasn't perfect as you could probably tell, but I am so happy that I finally did this upgrade. And this isn't the end of my upgrade because eventually I will be upgrading my case and other components as well. So if you actually had any thoughts on this or any other PC builds or upgrades that you do, be sure to leave it in the comments area below. And if you did wanna see more of my geek gear reviews, I do have an entire playlist. I'll leave that in the description area below.